So one of the first steps of getting your finances in order is to work out where your money actually goes. How can you plan to save or invest if you can't actually work out why you have no money? So to combat this problem over the past couple of years, I've been tracking my expenses and today I'm going to share with you how I actually do it and how you can do it as well. Plus, I'll also show you how I spent my money in 2020. Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Faizy and today we're looking at how I tracked my expenses in the unforgettable year that was 2020. So when I first started to track my expenses, I was using an Excel spreadsheet like most people. The reason being is because Excel is quite accessible. It's on pretty much every computer and it's very easy to use. But unfortunately, there's been many times where my computer has crashed due to a virus or malware or whatever it is and I've lost so much data. So as a result, I lost my expense tracking spreadsheet. Therefore, I do every Everything online now through Google Sheets and Google Sheets and Google products were working very fine for the last couple of years but this year I'm gonna to start to use Notion because you can sort things on there very very easily and it has a lot of advanced filters that Google Sheets just doesn't have but this video is gonna be just about Google Sheets because Google Sheets is just as good as Excel if you really look at it. Well, it's almost as good and you have the added benefit of instant sync across all your devices, which is so convenient. Now, because we're only tracking our expenses, we don't need to use any complex formulas or functions. So Google Sheets will work just fine. So let's get into the expenses. Okay, so basically this is the spreadsheet. Now it might look a bit overwhelming, but we will dissect everything one by one. So first of all, let's start off with the actual expense categories that are very nice and colorful here. So first of all, personal food and recreation. This is basically just, you know, entertainment expenses, going out, eating. Secondly, we've got the ATM expense. Now, the reason why I put it as an expense is because I wanna count the ATM, like taking money out of the ATM as an expense, and not the actual spending of the cash. The reason being is because it just gets very, very annoying to track when I spend my cash because if I get changed, then, you know, it goes somewhere else and it's just very annoying. So by counting the actual money when it comes out of the ATM and out of your bank account as an expense, it's just a lot easier. Um, so that's that. We've got miscellaneous expenses. That's just random stuff throughout the year. Now, Amazon is a very interesting one because I actually started an Amazon business a few years ago and that business actually failed. And this is still here as a reminder of my failure. And I just keep forgetting to get rid of this. So I'll do this someday. Uh, but yeah, Amazon. And then we've got Opal, which is basically travel expenses like public transport. Um, family is just groceries and just stuff for the family, basically. Uh, petrol and whatnot. Phone bill, pretty obvious. And YouTube is basically all the expenses incurred for like YouTube purposes only. I just want to track like how much this was. And then we've got books, courses, online learning. Basically, this is just expenses incurred for self-development purposes and whatnot. So it's just for me to track this expense and see how much I actually spend on that. Clothing and shoes, technology. Family 2.0 is basically um, like a subset of family. And the reason why I have done it as a, a second family 2.0 is not because I have a second family, it's just to... It's just to separate this expense, um, just to make it easier for myself to track this unique expense. And holiday, which is something which none of us actually got to experience. So this spreadsheet will also be available to download for you guys, um, so you can get an Excel copy. Um, there's a link in description. It'll take you to a read-only Google Sheets file, and then you can download it as an Excel. The other thing is, if you just copy and paste this read-only file to your own Google Sheets, just make sure that the formulas here are accurate because when I did it, for some reason, if you copy it to a second Google Sheets, it just messes up the formulas for some reason, so just be mindful. Now, of course, with these expenses, you can customize these to your liking. This is very personal to me, like obviously, you're not gonna have like a YouTube expense or Amazon or whatever it is, or Family 2.0, <laughs> uh, unless you wanna do that, that's completely fine. So let's go into what the, each of these cells are doing and what formulas we actually use. So the way I like to set it up is I like to do a weekly tracker. So on a Sunday, I'll go through all of my bank accounts and see what I spent and I'll basically just put it in here. And all of these debits add up to a total on the right here. And I've made a total on the left as well, just so it's easier for me to see. And basically each week on these dates, I just add everything up and just track it. it. Takes me like two to three minutes, very, very simple. And then I just move on with my day. Now these three columns are very, very important. Um, these are pretty much the things which uh, matter the most to me here. Now this average weekly expenditure basically gives me a guide as to see how much I'm spending 
and whether or not I'm above or below average based on my last couple of weeks. Now, of course, when you first start off and it's only January, this figure won't be as accurate because the data can be hugely skewed because obviously you haven't really spent money for the rest of the months. And this uses a average if formula. So basically what it is saying is that out of all of the weeks, only average the weeks if it's greater than zero. So of course, in every single week, I'm gonna have an expense. So it'll only average the expenses if I have spent something. That way we are only counting the weeks that have actually already happened and it's not counting the weeks which haven't happened because if we're in January right now, obviously you're not gonna have expenses for all of these months. And if it counts those months as well, the data is gonna be hugely skewed and it's not gonna be accurate. And the current total expenditure, this is fairly simple as well. It pretty much just adds up everything that is in here and it just puts it in here. And this basically gives me a tracker as to how much I've spent so far. And it just shows how we're doing for the entire year. But the most important thing in the spreadsheet is the estimated yearly total expense. Now what this is doing is this is multiplying the average, which is B2, by 52. I put 53 here because last year there was like a week 53 where a few days were in December and January. So I've just done that. But basically it will multiply it by this number and it will give us a guide as to how we're doing for the year. And essentially it just gives us a projection of what the expenses will be for the entire year. So if you are two months into the year, you would have a fairly accurate average weekly expenditure. And then this spreadsheet can estimate how much your expenses will be for the entire year. I found that this actually helps me a lot to forecast where I'm gonna be in the next you know, couple of months, which is really, really good. So if you're only like a week or two into the year, this forecast is obviously not gonna be accurate, but if you're, you know, six months in, then of course it will actually really help. So let's get into the actual expenses. But before we do, if you think that tracking your expenses through a spreadsheet seems very tough or you don't have time, or if it's just confusing, there's an app you can use. It's called WeMoney. Basically you can link your bank accounts through this app and it categorizes your expenses by default. It tracks your net worth and there's a community feature as well, which discusses personal finance. This video isn't sponsored by anyone, but it's an easy alternative to use. Plus you can get a monthly updated credit score as well. So onto the expenses. So now we're gonna look at how I actually spent money for this entire year. And you can obviously see I spent about 7.6K for the year. Now, I don't know if you guys would consider this to be a lot of money or if it's very little, um, it is what it is. And based on the spreadsheet, I've basically added up everything and listed, you know, different expense categories. So family was the biggest expense at about 20%. And then I've got YouTube, which was surprisingly quite a lot. I spent like a bit recently just to buy like lights and stuff for the YouTube channel. Um, so that's about 18%, which is quite high. And then we've got family 2.0. And if we actually add this up, it is about 33%. So one third of all the expenses were family, which is good. Uh, technology is like a fourth one. And of course, that's fairly accurate. I mean, tech is, you know, pretty expensive. We've got some pretty big expenses here and then we've got opal now opal could have been one of the biggest expenses this year but since we were working from home there was a lot of opal here a lot of public transport and then it was basically cut down a lot so only like one here another one here so yeah that's a huge expense that was cut down miscellaneous stuff and personal food and entertainment and all of that that's actually only eight percent which i was actually really surprised by I thought this would be at least 1.5 and at least be on par with, with the family expenses. But um, yeah, I'm just surprised because like it happened quite a lot over here. But then after the lockdown started in March, there's not much yellows here and then a few yellows here. But yeah, it is what it is. Books, courses, online learning, 5%, phone bill, just like a one-off expense. ATM, only $150. I thought it would have been at least like 250 but I guess I only take out money from the ATM to like get haircuts and stuff. So it <laughs> doesn't really matter there. And holidays, of course, zero. Amazon, zero. And clothing and shoes was zero as well for some reason. Um, I was very shocked at seeing this because I thought I would have spent at least a couple hundred bucks on this. But I guess with the work from home situation, um, you know, you barely, like you don't need to spend a lot of money. You can just work in your PJs and stuff and do that. So that's fairly interesting. So the only thing that I hate about this Google spreadsheet setup is that you have to be doing this to add up the expenses, which is very tedious. I know that there are a few methods to use like conditional formatting to actually 
find out the expense and let it do it for you but I've just been so busy this year or last year that I haven't been able to actually do it so um, for now this will do um, as I said with Notion I'm going to start to use that to track my expenses uh, and I'll show you how I do that maybe sometime this year and that'll be really good. And basically this is really it. I just like to track my expenses and I don't really keep budgets. In fact, I have never kept a budget in my entire life because personally I know that I don't spend that much money anyways by default thanks to how I've been brought up. So realistically, if I don't spend that much, there's no point putting a constraint on how much I should actually spend. And the way that I look at it is that it's much easier to increase your income through side hustles or investing than it is to decrease your expenses. You can really only decrease your expenses up to a certain point and then you become extremely frugal and then you might actually feel restrictive and start to hate things about your life and we really don't want to hate ourselves. So tracking does fine. Color coding helps as well as I can easily categorize expenses and basically analyze them like the nerd that I am. Now I just want to say that these expenses are very personal to me. This might seem very low or it might seem very high depending on who you are. But basically I'm not a big spender. I have never been a big spender and I'm not intentionally trying to spend less just to save money. Generally speaking I don't spend a lot if I don't need to. But if it's something that can give me value then I definitely spend. So that's it guys. Hopefully this video was valuable. Again you can download this free spreadsheet in in the description please like and subscribe if you found this valuable thanks guys sometimes it makes a huge difference